Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're going to be uh, talking about Arctic Blast, which is our most recent film that we needed to watch. And what we're going to do for this episode, we're going to start it off with another song. Here we go from Within Nostalgia, City of Nameless Faces.
oh, that's an amazing song. Um, that is Kai and Alyssa of Within Nostalgia. And you know what? We just wanted to start it off with that, but here we go. This is starting from scratch with Daniel and Tosh right now. There is no uh, secondary, uh, or sorry, triple dairy? I don't think there's a word for that. Triple dairy? On base? Uh, or so not on base, on deck? Uh, a third person. There's no third about person today. Trillandary. That sounds cool. Like Trillandy. A trilogy in a secondary. Trilogy? A trilogy. <laughs> no, Trillandary. <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> I will okay. say, I just went on Spotify and liked that song as we we're listening to it because it's really fucking good. And I wish I could have super liked it. Honestly, like it, it's so cool. <laughs> uh, just knowing, knowing uh, these two people, especially, mm. especially because. Mm. The screamer is also Alyssa. Hell yeah, it girl. Doesn't e- it doesn't even sound like her, but it's so cool. It's like, uh, ah, wow. Uh, and so it, versatile, it, her voice. Holy shit. This bleak metal band is, uh, you can find them almost anywhere. But I, I do I do advise you to go and buy their uh, most recent album on iTunes, with, which is uh, Void and Decay. Mm. Um I love it within nostalgia in, you know what? I, I love that they're the, actually Kai Kai helped us with one of the questions um, for Jason Burke. Oh, on really? This episode. Yeah, he oh. did. Kai Kai watched the uh, Arctic blast for us. What? Yeah, he did. Did oh, I not tell so you that? No, I yeah. didn't know that. What a Shout sweetie. out to Kai Bell. <laughs> Thank you so fucking much. Um, yeah. And check out the interview that you did. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, so I got to, uh, I got to interview uh, Jason Burke for this film, and I can't believe that I got to. But uh, before we get into that, we just want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Nickelbrook Brewing (laughs) Corporation. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think I think we should let you go first. Just just tell us the the first of all the name. Mm what it looks like on uh, for the artwork and also the percentage um, and what style beer it is. Okay. Okay. In front of me, I've got no bad days. D A Z E. Here's a really Z Z or Sorry. for our American listeners. She meant to say Z. Um, I, I hate <laughs> it's Like I cringe when I hear Z and you cringe when you hear Z, but it's a Canadian company when they were pitching, they're like, no bad days. D A Z E. I don't think that <laughs> ever happened because why would they have to say that? Well, it's different. It can- <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's got a really cool skeleton holding a beer. He's got a mustache and a sombrero. It's called dry hopped lager. I don't know where the percentage is. Where'd you go? Oh, 4.3%. So it's a nice, so dry hopped lager mm. essentially means it's not as bitter or as sweet as it normally would be. Um, before you do that, yo, oh, pour it into the glass mm. so we can have a good smell. But um, what I love about a dry hop lager, again, not so sweet. It's not as sweet as, you know, uh, Corona. You know, Corona is very yes. sweet, yeah. right? Yeah. They're around the same percentage. But what I love about this one is it, it's got a lot of guava and papaya. Oh. Which, which we'll get to very soon. But like, holy smokes, papaya, guava in a dry hop lager. Usually it's either like, you know, wheat, uh, rice, you got uh, apples sometimes, stuff like that. What does it smell like? Anything, just beer. Mm-mm. It's not like pineapple, but it smells like almost like when you crack a can of like, or the lid off of like canned fruit or something like that. Okay, okay, That's okay. What what's what's your of. first taste? Um, I don't know. It's not citrus, but you can tell it's fruity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Your I'm palate take a is better here. than mine. Here, but here, here we go. That's actually got to be my favorite so far. It's fucking amazing. You know what? It's fantastic. Um, That's the best I've, I've ever had. They also have this specific beer with a little bit of lime added to it as well. It's an interesting color too. Anyways, I was like, I, I don't taste lime, but I'm like, I feel like it's citrus. Well, there's but no it's lime not. in this one. I know. There's I know. no lime in this one. But. I know. 
Um, anyways, amazing. but it's actually really, really good. I'm gonna get more. The of those. papaya, yeah, the papaya is really standing out to me. Yeah. Um. See, you if you've had papaya, I've not. I've never had it. I haven't really had it much before, so I probably don't really understand the flavor. But like, it's definitely it's something that I can't wrap my head around, which all would I, explain that it tastes like papaya. All I can say is it tastes like um, it, it, it makes Budweiser taste like it was water ran down the ass of your crack <laughs> right into your mouth you know so so this this is like a shower of gold like onto you oh i feel like a fucking queen right now i'm gonna enjoy this yes, thing. queen. <laughs> <laughs> okay and so my my uh my beer today is also from nickelbrook brewing company comp company company uh it is <laughs> naughty neighbor which is amazing okay so naughty neighbor is actually what got me into them and I, I love telling this story just because it's, you know, uh, Nickelbrook, I remember when I was a kid, believe it or not, it was like the meh of the beers. Really? Yeah, it was the meh of the beers. And then they started getting fancy and then they started winning. And I like it. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I mean, I didn't drink Nickelbrook when I was underage or anything. Well, I sure hope you didn't. I, d <laughs> I did not do that. We're going to have to get you a retroactive ticket for that under <laughs> drinking. <laughs> In hindsight, it was still pretty badass. Um, <laughs> and anyways, this is the beer that really got me into Nickelbrook. It was this cheeky bastard headstock. Those are the those are the mains. Yeah. And then all of these things started rolling out afterwards, like the one you have right in your hand. Oh, I, think I, that's, know. I think that's maybe a year old. This is my favorite by far. I haven't seen it at their store. So no. so it's got to be newer for sure. It's amazing. That's like such a summer beer. But but what I loved about Naughty Neighbor was that my dad and I would be able to drink it together and we'd laugh at the the cans because, you know, it's oh. like the sexy next door neighbor in fish, <laughs> fish nets. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Girl next door, but she's a naughty neighbor. Oh, she was the naughty neighbor. <laughs> um, anyways... So now they ch they actually changed the artwork. I still really like it a lot. It's like um, yeah, they got a roller derby girl. Yeah, it's a roller der perfect roller derby girl. Yeah, still with the fishnets, which is awesome. Everyone knows roller derby is the sexiest sport for women. I so. feel like it is. Yeah. Why though? Why? What do you think? Why? Um, because they still get to wear like short shorts. You know what I mean? Or their fishnets. They actually do. Like you can still show off a lot of leg, but you also get to be a little aggressive. It's not like lacrosse. Like you can fucking body check people shoulder them elbow them right so there's a lot of like it's a good way to get out your aggression who doesn't like a girl fight a chick fight <laughs> well i mean like the women love it i mean like the people that are actually in the fight they <laughs> fucking love that shit oh, i don't man. i don't get it they're like they're like hungry for fucking blood yeah anyways this beer uh is an american pale ale mm. it is we got a 4.9% alcohol. We got a 38 IBU. We got uh, malts up the wazoo, two row, pale ale, carafoam, flaxed wheat, <laughs> hops, cascade. And I'm seeing this beer cascade right in my fucking, right in my fucking glass right now. I can tell <laughs> you that. But the yeast is the California ale. So that's why you got the American pale ale title to it. Um, it's, I already know what it tastes like, but I'm about to go for it again. And it's not going to be just a sip because I can't handle just a sip. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, Nickelbrook. Delish. Shout out to Jen. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's such a. It's fresh. It's fruity. It's definitely meant to be poured into a glass because mm. they mainly, well, I, you know what? I think they only sell. They're prime beers in cans now. Tall boys. Yeah. Right? These taste so incredibly different. It's insane. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the great thing is you like uh, you can't really do it during COVID. But when you go into their, their retail store, they had like 20, 25 taps right there of different kinds of beers for you to try to have. Like, you know, like yeah. I, I would get a growler. So if you need to find them, they're on Drury. Drury. Lane in Burlington. And yes, I know the muffin man from Drury Lane. <laughs> it's like, it is, why does that sound it's familiar? Fucking Nickelbrook. <laughs> I can tell you right the fuck now. 
<laughs> okay, so now you know what time it is. We got to start doing Arctic Blast here. Let's blast off. Let's blast off. <laughs> so let me just tell you that the storyline for Arctic Blast, which was made in 2010. Yep. It was purposely made as a B disaster film. And yep. we'll get into that later because we didn't watch it as what we learned about it. You know, we, 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 we had a lot of, and we ended up with a lot of research at well, the end, you know, you mentioned this before. You don't like watching trailers before you watch a movie, mm -hmm. but we watched a clip, a very a clip. specific a, clip. It, and it was probably only a 30 second clip. Yeah. But it set this weird expectation, which like, anyways, I feel like. Yeah. The expectation. No, no, no. Go ahead. Tell, tell the expectation. Well, obviously in the first episode, we <laughs> talked about the Velocipaster I feel like in a way we were expecting this film to be extremely like not taken seriously whatsoever. Right. Like the, like the Velocipaster. Yeah. Very like some, so. there's gotta be yeah. some elements of comedy or like whatever. And it couldn't have been like for a film being in sort of same genre, not a disaster film like Velocipaster wasn't, but a B film, they couldn't be further from each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, Velocipaster didn't have, that's a C film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's definitely a C film. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason why we're saying it's a C film is because there was actually no point to the film other than <laughs> yeah. being racist, having some funny laughs. Just ridiculous. Kn knowing and knowing that they were trying to be terrible. Yeah. So, so like there was no substance. Yeah. That's what we were talking yeah. about before too, especially in the interview with Jason Burke is that, uh, he's got, su he's got some substance. Oh yeah. Fuck. Like he's a he, thoughtful he, person. He's, he's so smart and it's not like he's, you know, like a, a lot of times, even me myself, like I'm like writing scripts and there's no rhyme or reason for what I'm saying. Mm. And the first thing that someone will ask me is why, you know, like, why are you writing this? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but with him. If you ask him why, he's going to give you a precise answer. Yeah. He's going to give you drawings of how he's going to shoot it. He's and this and that. He was only the writer on this film. Yeah. But he was not the director. The director is actually a very uh, prestigious, 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 prestigious yep. uh, director, Brian Trenchard Smith. He's directed The Man of Hong Kong uh, along with many starting uh, roles that introduced, sorry, many films that introduced people like Chase Crawford. Oh yeah. I always Remember? forget he, that. Yeah. This guy discovered Chase Cross Crawford from what is it? Gossip Girl. Yeah. Gossip Girl. And the boys. Is he in the boys? Chase Crawford. Yeah. He's the deep. Fuck off. Yeah, that's what I was that's like. When you're like, I don't like Chase Crawford. I'm like, wait, don't you love him in that show? <laughs> that's Chase Co Crawford. Yeah, hell yeah. Cockford. <laughs> Yo, he's, he's got fucking, those deep blues, he's man. fucking beautiful. I can't believe it. Actually, that that just you, that just makes me feel that much more happy. For yeah, this kind there of, you go. <laughs> for this for this film, Arctic Blast, and you know, he also discovered Nicole. Kidman. That's insane. Like he Nic discovered <laughs> Nicole Kidman. That's unbelievable. Like he he directed her. I, I think when she was twelve or something like that. It was something ridiculously young. Mm. And this man is an Australian director. Um, he does now reside in L.A., but he's he's an older guy. Hopefully, he listens to this. I hope he does. Um, but let's, uh, let's get in, into it finally again, even though I keep saying that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we want the synopsis. Let's get the synopsis cool. here. It says when a solar eclipse sends a colossal blast of super chilled air towards the earth, it then sets off a tra catastrophic <laughs> catastrophic chain of events. <laughs> no one's ever said that in the <laughs> history of the world. Catastrophic. Catastrophic. Uh, Catastrophic. Chain chain of events event. that threatens to engulf the world in ice and begin a new ice age. And what was cool, I started reading a lot of what uh, what uh, Jason Burke wrote. 
and a lot of it didn't get into the film, but that's okay. That's okay. So uh, I do want to talk about something a little bit before we get into the whole uh, storyline is that for this film, what we learned just from the interview is so much more than what we expected, yeah, right? Yeah. We thought, oh, it was probably just the the writer. He wrote a good script that turned into something that didn't turn out to be that good. No, opposite. We knew who the director was going to be. Mm-hmm. They knew who uh, was or where it was going to be shot and who was going to star in it, which is Michael Shanks. And they brought Jason Burke on in the end. And he wrote their idea, which is phenomenal to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like we we thought the opposite. And I can see how that that can construe so many other films for un, uh, for us now. Like what if what if there was rhyme and reason to or or like a method of method madness. madness. Yeah, a method of madness, <laughs> madness to to how they and I agree with madness because it is a chaotic film. It's a B disaster film, but pur- purposely B disaster film, which is crazy because when when I say purposely, like it's a B film, but the the movie was fucking good. It was very interesting. Yeah. Um Essentially, yeah, like uh, there's a big gust of wind that happens when there's like a polar vortex in a way Mm -hmm. um, that happens with a solar eclipse of some sort at the same exact time causes an ice age. Um, If you toss or sorry, if you get caught in the icy fog, you turn into ice. Yeah, literally in like seconds, seconds, seconds. If you touch it, your tissue. Yeah. Done. So, okay. uh, so with, w- w- what, what do you want to say about this? I would like to say, not that I'm just comparing to the Velocipaster. However, mm-hmm. like if you're talking about, there's got to be like rhyme or reason. There's got to be a method to the madness. I just think I, after listening to your interview with Jason and he was spending a lot of time talking about a B disaster film, it's like it's a very specific genre. And I'm like, maybe I haven't had enough experience with those kind of films because he was talking about like some very important like tropes or things that should have to be in it, which like the number one thing being a broken family, like mm-hmm. some like mm-hmm. that's very, and like the whole time I was watching it, my notes were just like, why is there so much emphasis on like this mother and father divorcing? And, but what I thought was really interesting is that, as opposed to like a normal B film or like a C film where it's like just like very ridiculous. I feel like the writing and the way that they were making it, they spent a lot of time using a lot of like scientific language and talking about like weather. Like they were, and I felt personally as like watching, I'm like, I'm convinced that this could happen. They spent a lot of time explaining how this is not impractical. Like this is real, like whatever, that it does kind of put you more into it and be like, oh shit. But the funny thing is, I think by the end, it's like they want to resolve the issue. They're trying to fix the problem, which seems impossible. But what seemed more important was fixing the family unit. Mm -hmm. So you can see that like what he said in the interview Mm -hmm. is just like, wow, it's very true. That was just as important, if not more important at the end to make sure that like the family is solidified again. That's interesting. That's actually a very, very interesting thing to say. Because you, I feel like he studied so much film. Mm -hmm. And, you know, deeper than almost what we've done. We do a lot of deep thinking about film, too. Mm -hmm. But the way he writes things, he really has that family-oriented kind of... and, And he's got a formula. Fuck. Oh yeah, which is crazy. Apparently, he uses what he used Black Fly, which is his award-winning short, uh, not short film. I keep saying short film, feature-length film, feature-length film, Black Fly. It's about his childhood. Yeah, and and you know I, I'm not gonna say that I've watched it because I haven't. I'm excited to watch it. I'm gonna be watching it, and I'm gonna be getting Jason Burke back on to talk about it. Um, 
But holy shit, just thinking about how you use your, because it was his starting script from a long time about, ago about himself. He used that to pitch a ton of different stories in the business. And now he's got a very nice career length portfolio. This guy's, this dude's living off of this stuff. He's, he has no, like he didn't tell us that he has a second job or anything. And it sounds like his only job is film business. Yeah. Yeah, he's busy. He's fucking busy as hell. And we'll talk about his his personal life later on. Um, unless you listen to the interview, actually. You, you, should. Know what? you should listen it's to the really interview. Good. We won't talk about his life too much. Sorry, I'm getting into it too much. <laughs> but I just like I just got a, a, a major man boner for him, I think. <laughs> oh, for sure. That's a moaner. A moaner. Got a moaner. I got, <laughs> <laughs> got a moaner from Wait, my main no, man, it's, Jason. It's a manner. It's a man or. <laughs> it's a manor. It's a manor. It's a manor. It's a big fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think something that's really, really good, if you want to get into, like, comparing and contrasting. So, I mean, this these are things that happen right off the bat. What are the first things that happen in the film? They're in, like, they're studying. They're, they have the main character. What is the name? Jack, I think, right? Michael Shanks. Yeah, but his real name. I'm just going to call him Michael Shanks because uh, that's how I know him because I've looked yeah, at his name. Jack, yeah, it's Jack. It's okay. Jack. So we have Jack like in his space where they're studying like what's going on, like him and his team and whatever. We establish that he and his wife are going to be divorcing. He's late for his appointment with a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And actually, you know what Jason said? It's not just like the familial like unit when we asked him when you asked him about like what is like the main part of this film he was like it's actually like the father daughter which is why Naomi or whatever his daughter plays such a big role and she's stuck with him for most right. of the film yeah, during exactly, the disaster yeah. so they're separated the two of them have to resolve their relationship for the whole family to come back it's like a solid unit but mm -hmm. one of like the first couple of things that happen like maybe I don't know I want to say like 10 15 minutes in the film is we see people die and we see them die in two very different ways. One of them is like the very first scene where the guy like freezes in front of your eyes and it's kind of like cheesy. It's like almost seems like it's fast forwarded, like they use the special effects. But remember the second scene of people dying? Right, where you don't see it? Yeah. Where you do, <laughs> you do not see it. Continue. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. I know exactly what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about. Yeah, it's like, so it's like these unsuspecting, <laughs> victims on like the shoreline or whatever they don't know about the miss like right it's, it's almost like we see that the people who have discovered it someone has to die in that situation now it's like before the word has gotten out it's a father some of their dog they're outside like chopping firewood or something and we see them everything's good and we see like the miss like the like roll in and then the next thing you see is they're just dead on the ground like face down we don't get to right. see the dog die, which is good. I know which you were good. just like, I'm so scared. No, I would cry. I would cry. <laughs> I know. I'm, but I'm glad about that choice. I'm not going to lie. But I remember like when we were talking about this, like uh, earlier, we're just like, you know, it's, I know you kind of like the special effects. Like when they showed someone dying, whatever, like in front of your eyes, cause they're trying to show you like how fast it can happen. Like visually mm -hmm. you have to be able to comprehend like just well, how we also, serious we this also is. don't know what it would look like exactly. in real life either. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be a fog of some sort, yeah. but you wouldn't be able to see it or like, it's going to be like a fucking, like, have you ever seen, um, a snow front come in while you're in front of the dead zone and you just see the wall coming towards you? Have mm -hmm. you ever seen that happen? No. It's scary as hell really? like you just see the snow c coming towards you a wall of it wow right um i've i've seen that a m not a million times but quite a few times mm. and maybe that's how it would look it's just snow coming at you yeah and you're like oh it's just snowing and it's coming towards me that's kind of cool that i <laughs> <laughs> you're dead <laughs> yeah that was a really good in reenactment, actually. I keep, well, I keep thinking that there's going to be a video of this right now. I know, and I'm like fuck. frozen in front of a camera. That was that's so not good. There. That was like award winning. <laughs> that was award winning acting. But oh yeah, at, for sure. What for you sure. and I, you're a moron. So is your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, get out of here. You're not welcome in this episode. Get out of here. You said Judy. there was no, there's no Trinity here. Like you're not welcome. There's two people on this episode. <laughs> but get okay. out of here, Judy. Yeah. 
But what we dis- we discussed <laughs> and what we like, agreed on was that <laughs> that not showing the people dying and showing them face down on the ground and like inferring like that what we saw just happened to them, but we didn't have to see that happen to them this time was more impactful because you're just like, oh no, you understand. You're like, this is what's happening. I'm not going to see it. And then bam, they're dead. And that actually, I felt a lot more from that than seeing the person freeze in real time on screen. Agreed. Agreed. And did we talk about this during the first episode of Velocipaster where is it scarier to see the actual monster versus Mm. not seeing the monster? We didn't talk about that, but I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've talked about this plenty of times before. Yeah. And I'm glad that, like, you know what? It's rare that you see the first scene where you see them get frozen, yeah. right? And then the next scene, you don't see them get frozen. Right. It's very rare, but it was still very impactful. I still do wish that they didn't show it in the first scene. Mm. You know, it was kind of like creepy, creepy, creepy. You get the Jaws style shit going on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dun, 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 or the, the, f- the, the fucking floating camera through the woods, like the evil dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that even. Oh, if that's my starting from scratch um, uh, entry for th- at the end of this, like yeah. what I would change, I'd probably I'd probably just change the first scene. Are you saying if you're saying right that you're saying I like that you'd almost want to see like at least you, some stuff from the perspective of the, the perspective persona, yeah. of the evil itself or like the yeah. issue itself the issue itself oh like my even God. though like because it's it's like uh, think about it this way like uh covid mm. all of this stuff right now it's probably the earth fighting against us right now right yeah. so it actually has some sort of lifestyle life uh life in itself right mm. so mm. it has a life why don't we give a perspective to it yeah you know, okay, so you get what I, I think that if I were to change it at all, that's what I would change. I really like that. And that's not even a change. That's just an addition. Mm-hmm. Other than the first scene, just don't show them getting frozen. You know, see them getting chased by it. Yeah, like you want to keep the... And see them frozen in the end. You, you, know? you want to like, keep the uh, yeah. mystery a little bit oh, longer. fuck. It's, that's yeah. such a good point. I really like that. Yes. Fuck yes. Oh, no barking. Okay, he lifted his head. Sorry, <laughs> that was a good one, though. <laughs> I really like that. And actually. and Tosh was referring to her dog right now. But no, you. Sometimes when you high five, Dan just starts barking. <laughs> See, <sighs> I gotta put his shock collar on. This is crazy. You know, once there was a dog named Barky. <laughs> put a shock collar on him. Never barked again. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name now? It can't be Barky. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be Barky anymore. Oh, it's right? just ironic. He's ironically named Barky now. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think anyone that's listening to this has seen Tosh's dog bark, but it's a little Pomeranian. Well, you don't see a dog bark. You hear it bark. You can see it too. <laughs> You're right. It's like a film. It's like audio. No, and no, <laughs> fucking, fucking, a fucking link. He he loses. It, like he like. It's oh. not like he loses balance. He's like it mid air when he <laughs> barks. He like barks so hard that he yeah he throws his whole body into off it. the ground. Imagine how ground. many stress knots he has from being just angry just, all the time. Ah! <laughs> and just jumps, jumps every single time he 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 lifts off the ground. Bugle barely barks, but like Link is the one that gets him barking. <laughs> yeah, it's a pack mentality. <laughs> it, tr- it truly is. Okay, well, what you were saying, I would like to say. Yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about COVID, right? Mm-hmm. We were thinking about this earlier, and I think it's important. We were like, and we didn't ask Jason. Obviously, this would probably be more. Well, I guess for different people who made the film but this was made over a decade ago and i know like the people like those kinds of like disaster movies were happening a lot even like big ones you know what i mean at that time 2012 was a scary time right so and, leading and, up to and, that and even leading leading up to 
2010 yeah. was like, um, oh God, what's journey to the cent- center of the, the earth? Not that one. Not that one. It was, it was a uh, fucking where it was Ethan Hawke and the, the center of the earth, the core of the earth stopped rotating. Mm, I never saw the it. core, the, the core, core, the core. That's what it's called. <laughs> wow. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, the core great disaster film. Yeah. So outdated now, but like great disaster film leading up to that. I guarantee you, I I bet you, I bet you if we asked Jason right now, he'd be like, yeah, fuck, fuck. I love that movie. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think I saw it in theaters twice. I think what's interesting. <laughs> wow, that's really I was good. young. Don't I was worry. young. And Ethan Hawke's a babe, so <laughs> maybe I love not that for butt you. chin. Oh uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I just want to. I mean, I just, I have a, I just a, poke it. Like, I have a cleft chin. I think the best. You just want to poke it, like yeah, right in the yeah. middle. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I think what's okay in terms of like just like these crazy like out there b films or c films right it's always something ridiculous or ambiguous or completely impossible but like i said earlier when they're trying to basically convince the audience and other people in the film like this really could happen like whatever but there was this emphasis like the conflict was like man versus nature Mm -hmm. right that was the main conflict i think anyways and it kind of maybe something like this isn't necessarily possible (laughs) but they wanted us to be almost like to take something away from it and just be like, it's because of what people on earth were doing to the world. Like that's Mm -hmm. the consequence that we suffer. Right. And I think, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so there's some seriousness to it. Like instead of, instead of global warming, what, well, technically, okay. So I think I, well, it's climate change in this, but I think what happens in this film specifically is that global warming opened up a, uh, an area in the ozone, yeah. which let let this whole like kind of shit happen. Yeah. Right. So technically, it was it was global warming that caused this that caused this whole chain of reaction, and it can happen. Yeah. I think that's very smart, and and I I can't wait till we get to call out some of these reviews and errors. Oh yeah. Oh my and god. And stuff like that because that's actually against one of the errors. Yeah. Like I think that people are pretentious as shit and they think that they need to uh uh just tell them how how things are wrong, but they're like, you know, what I don't get is when someone comments on a film is like this is the worst movie I have ever seen. And you're like, well, did you talk to the director or the writer or the network or anything now? Like Hallmark knows that it's a Hallmark movie. They're like, they laugh. They laugh. They're like, this is the cutest shit I've ever seen. It's never going to happen in real life, but it's damn cute. You know, like they're like, they know what they're doing. Yeah. It's not like humans are fucking stupid. So maybe. Anyways. <laughs> You're a moron. So is your mother. <laughs> Leave That's my mother out of this. I don't want to hear noise. <laughs> hey, furniture. stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's so like hurts the ears. She's like, stop talking i love it oh she turns me on i know that voice imagine in the bedroom judge judy hey furniture stop talking okay yes ma'am yes (laughs) ma'am like she just fucking (laughs) chokes you because you don't stop (laughs) because you're like yes ma'am stop talking oh my god i don't want to hear noise i don't want to hear noise (laughs) so (laughs) is your mother oh man you're a moron and so is your mother (laughs) <laughs> i think you could replace her if she's sick you could be her um no 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 no. i'm what's the word dirty dan no oh god oh god dirty dan's coming out tonight <laughs> you could be judge judy's yeah. understudy <laughs> dirty dan dirty dan says no yeah out of here <laughs> get. get i said oh. get <laughs> look at what he thinks you're talking to get out of here oh I love you, but you need to get out of here. But you need to get <laughs> lost. <laughs> okay, so uh, continuing on. They 
the movie is about the 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 the, the father and the daughter. Yeah. The whole familia. Anything that happens outside of this is literally just a disaster film that was for entertainment. Yeah. They weren't expecting to have um, a million reviews saying, oh, this is amazing. They were expecting people to have enjoyment. Absolutely. To be entertained. And I think a big part of that is like I felt anyways about (sighs) maybe two thirds into it. Is mm-hmm. that it kind of kept this height all like it's all like you're the not way through all the way through, yeah, the inciting incident happened very early. Mm-hmm. There's like a climax, and then you basically, but you were sitting pre climax for quite a long time. And so for me, anyways, like I've said, like I personally like some downtime in a film, so I can be like, okay, let me like process like what just happened. Like let me just be able to have some time to think. But it felt like it was keeping us at this height for such a long time. Because it is supposed to be chaotic and you're supposed to feel like, fuck, like, I don't know what's going on. You're maybe you're not supposed to be thinking critically. You're just like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. You're trying to, it's trying to show how bad it is, like, whatever. But remember what we were, ta- we were thinking anyways, talking about the people. And we, what, we figured they were in Canada, actually. Like, that one guy that they kept pulling out of Australia to show him and he's just oh, with yeah. his wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was, it, it felt awkward. Well, here's what, when, like... As much as it's like, okay, was did, did that need to have purpose? Like, why was it somebody out of the country? Why did he have so much? I don't know. Like, there was something just so strange about it. But when you and I watched, not together, but we watched Midnight Sky, right? Mm-hmm. And this, this whole thing with, like, sci-fi, like, whatever, and disaster movies, like, and it's true. And we're like, the more we thought, we're like, yeah, that is actually might be something that Holy happens a lot fuck. is in terms of communicating like what's really going on or showing the real impact you have to have somebody outside of the chaos communicating with those within it right i hope that jason burke listens to this and brian trenchard smith listens to this you just compared it to midnight sky yeah holy fuck holy fuck <laughs> that's actually that's a great I never thought of that before. But communication does play a huge role, right? It's, it's, it's like the main role. Also, because if you think about Australia, it's a decent sized country, right? But it is Mm -hmm. like an island, really, Mm -hmm. kind of. I don't really know if you can say that, but it is completely surrounded by water, coast to coast, right? It's a massive island. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that this is happening there, in my mind, I'm like, it's very isolating. So mm-hmm. they need to have communication with somebody who's outside of there, who like another English speaking country, like for sake of writing, like whatever mm-hmm. that would make the most mm-hmm. sense. But it is, makes it more scary because guess what? You're surrounded by water. No matter how big the country is, it's not like there's like fresh water, whatever to like split that up. Like it feels like anyone it's filmed was shot in Tasmania, like whatever. But it seems to be happening all over Australia. Like, it is scarier. Like, the threat is believable, I think. Wow. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree. You're just blowing my mind. Never thought of it like that. Think about it. (laughs) And now I think (laughs) about myself. You're a moron. So is your mother. (laughs) You called it. You call it. <laughs> okay, so final, just final words about how you feel overall about this film because we're going to get into some reviews and stuff, okay? Mm. I think like... Like, w- would you wa- would you recommend it to somebody too? I would, um, depending on the person. If you want to just sort of like relax on a Friday night, take it easy, like be entertained. I think that's what it's for. Um I'll bring, I want to bring up one more scene and it's a quick one because okay, I think okay, it's okay. really important and because especially for you, like when it Fair comes game. to film terms or like understanding how all that stuff works. But um, yeah, I actually would score it higher after talk, like hearing your interview with Jason too um, because I feel like there's so much more to it that I was like, I wasn't thinking about it. I don't know the archetypes of this. Like I'm not that familiar with this like niche genre. Like maybe there's more for me to learn about and I shouldn't be so... Um, narrow-minded <laughs> you know what I tons mean of, tons of things to totally. learn totally so yeah. I'm open to that now um, 
And the only thing I found confusing is the way how many blonde women they casted because there was literally like four, six of them that are like the same woman. I was like, this, that's visually confusing to me. That's probably the only thing I'd be like, you really like, you got to change. So that. that's the starting from scratch part. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, okay. So throw in some brunettes. Come uh, on. <laughs> I, oh, just throw in some difference yeah. because you know what? When you're first watching a movie or a TV show or, or anything like that, it, it is it is really yeah. hard to distinguish yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I I have that issue. I'm I'm like half blind with my fucking like pseudo convergence insufficiency and and you know, I've got some dead spots in my eyes. <laughs> so I can't see everything all the time. But uh, especially when she's kicking my ass at darts. And when I say she, I mean Tosh. Um, you mean one of the blonde ladies that was cast in this oh, film? <laughs> no, I don't know any of them. I don't know any of them. <laughs> they actually didn't like reach out to me. Like I tried reaching out to so many people for this. Luckily, the writer did. I think you got the most important person to honestly, get back to you, which honestly, I'm like, that's like, pretty fucking he's, awesome. Because he's still working. Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's still working. He's still killing it. But he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He fucking knows what he's doing. He does. Um, but yeah, can we talk about this one scene and then let's hear these of course, reviews? Of because course. this is, if you're going to watch this movie, uh, I actually highly recommend that you do. And if only for this one scene that happens probably two, three quarters of the way through, there's a random blonde lady and she's sitting in a bar alone drinking a glass of white wine, like Pinot, Pinot Gris. <laughs> and it shows like all of these like hard liquor bottles like lined up. There's opera music playing in the background. And you can tell that like we know there's a sh chaos happening outside and it's just so calm. And that's probably the best down moment of the entire film. So maybe that's why I loved it so much because I'm like, I feel like I'm taking this all in. Because there was like some dis actual disaster moment where people didn't know it was coming. I think she did. She was coming oh. to terms with her death happening. And that's why she just like, fuck this. If I were her, I would have probably cracked something stronger. But like, she's a classy lady. Like, drink your pinot. Anyways, so she's sitting there like no, di <laughs> no, di <laughs> no dialogue or anything. And um, you start to hear things. I think like you start to hear the wind or whatever start to come through. You, you visually like you see it coming in. And they do a dolly zoom when she's dying. And I was just like, and I remember like when we talked What's about it, we're like, wait, dolly zoom. Yeah. Or just a dolly in. I call it a dolly zoom. What do you call it? Dolly in? Well, a dolly zoom is something different than a dolly in. Oh. Was the dolly moving towards her or was it zooming in while the dolly was moving backwards? The, the zoom, uh, zoom while backwards. Wait, whatever. Oh, like like the dolly was moving back and it was zooming yeah, in. Yeah, so that weird that effect. That yeah. Weird effect. Yeah. Oh. That's why I wrote down because I was like, holy Fancy. fuck. I love that. I don't remember that. Oh, we're going to watch it, that scene because that stood out to me and I was just like, as soon as it happened, I was like writing down, writing down because you don't see that very so often. It is, it's, it's a doll. You're right. Yeah. Do it's, yeah. It is a dolly zoom. I'm glad that. Uh, yeah. Fuck. You know, you know I actually, I wrote, a, I wrote a film uh, a few you years ago. You wrote a film? I wrote a script. I directed it, actually. I did. Oh, it. shit. You don't even know this. Oh, my God. This is turning me on. Yeah. And Starting from scratch there was a right fucking now in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but I may not have had, like, the, all the equipment, but the technique of Dolly Zoom was there, and it was in it, actually. Mm. And because I was like, this is such an important thing. It needs to be in this. So I was like, yes. Anyways, it was about a sound monster. Okay. It's like a sound being, which you can't see you. anyways. Not important. But the dolly zoom, that's why I was just like, okay, that moment changed everything for me while I was watching the film. This is before talking to Jason, like before thinking critically about it. I'm like, that is so special. That scene that I was like, yeah, that changed everything it, for me. Well, because it, it, it was a part of a disaster film. It yeah. actually works in a disaster film. Where, like, she knows it's happening. And it makes sense that yeah. immediately in the first scene, they're jumping into, like, all this chaos and disaster that's happening. Like, every, you what can see every... Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Well, how you I have see. to show people dying in different ways, showing it, like, the exact process, showing none of it, showing the aftermath, showing people panicking, showing people doing nothing but thinking and being introspective. Mm -hmm. Like, so in my mind, I'm like, that was... a it uh, Like, this familiar Shit. thing. I'm like, okay. they really included so many different versions of, like what you would go through if you were actually there. Also, who's to say what you can and cannot 
say these are all choices yeah. by the directors and the producers, right? Yeah. So the director and the producer and the writer, well, whatever. But these are all choices. Like you actually have to decide on, like on it. You, you can't just go, oh, we'll see in in, yeah. in post. <laughs> yeah. No, you actually got to film it, bro. <laughs> like most definitely. So, I'm glad that you brought that up because that actually that creates a lot of controversy in my mind about how they did it. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it, I want more answers. Well, let's see what the fucking general public had to say. <laughs> let's just let's go for character er- errors first. Char- characters. Char- character errors. Character errors. <laughs> when Zoe is testing her blood sugars for the first time, she pricks her finger, adds the blood to the strip, and then inserts it inserts the strip into the meter. Mm-hmm. This is the correct procedure. The goof is that the meter showed her blood sugar was 58. Therefore, she needed sugar and not insulin because her blood sugar level was too low. Well, I mean, like, Ooh, yeah, maybe they should have. They, mm, yeah. Well, that's a very purposeful decision because <sighs> it seemed like it was, like, pointless, but they needed to have a little bit more drama with that trio, those three people together. Like, somebody had to be No, I think behind. what they're trying to say is that that would kill you. Yeah, I know, but like, don't like in the actual film, like they should have researched more for that, right? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. But I, I feel like that kind of thing would kill you too, right? Probably. Oh. That's a just a bad situation all around. I don't know. Anyways, geography errors. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see this. The two islands hit as the cloud travels towards Hobart are fictional or mislocated. There is no. Cromwell Island and Rikino Island, far from being 476 miles south of Hobart, is actually 1,500 miles east near Auckland. And okay, well, man, just enjoy the movie. That's what I mean. Yeah, okay, like if you, now, if now, K, now you're Dan, just being a fucking cunt. Dan, <laughs> Dan you're a film, you're a furred, right? You're a film nerd. You know the thing called suspension of disbelief. This person needs to fucking to be slapped in the face with it. That's okay. the whole point well, of watching well, well, movies. Maybe, maybe I should fucking slap uh, Journey's fucking face in it. Born and raised in South Detroit. There's no fucking <laughs> South Detroit. There's only East or West <laughs> bullshit. Fuck you. You no, don't know but, what the fuck you're talking about. Real. Go back to the fucking writing board. I fucking hate that song. <laughs> But for real, like I'm actually mad about that now. Sounds like <laughs> when people get when people get like really uptight or like anal about little details like this, it's like if that's really what you were, you know what I mean, worried about, then you're missing the whole point of the movie. Suspension of disbelief. That is the whole point of watching fictional films, like, right? Right. So you're saying I should probably try to like that song again because well that song's just damn wrong so (laughs) i don't know (laughs) music is not always supposed to that sounds like they're spitting facts factual errors okay are you ready for factual errors oh my god that's too long let's just go for a short one okay (laughs) during the opening few minutes you hear a radio broadcast saying it's a balmy 74 degrees here in hobart australia uses celsius centigrade system and has done so since 1966 which is cool i actually do like that because my my question was miles and kilometers yeah remember? oh yeah because i thought like if we're working on if they're working on uh celsius yeah right yeah then they right? should the, always the, be doing cl- yeah they, they work on yeah yeah so they would work on kilometers right but why does the intro say miles Oh, that is a little confusing. See, that's what I'm saying. So I did, I did see something like that too. Didn't mean it ruined the movie though. Like fucking grow up. It's a fucking movie. Enjoy the shit out of it. Jesus. Okay. Reviews. And then I got to pee. Cause I got to pee bad, but I'll do this. (laughs) Sometimes when you have to go really bad, just. Makes Just you don't better tell at you. Stuff. It makes you better at stuff because there's it, a pressure. <laughs> it's it. The pressure is real. Okay, so reviews one out of ten stars. 
Fucking asshole. First of all, let me start by saying that one star is more generous than I'd like to be. However, I'll award that one star for the comedy of errors. Do I read more? Like, honestly, this person is kind of a douche. Who the who did the research for this movie? Question mark. Honestly, giving insulin to a person with low blood sugar a dangerous thing for somebody to learn from a movie and that complete nonsense about the mesosphere falling. Well, maybe you should learn your fucking parentheses better, bro. <laughs> if this person that, is t- that taking- didn't even make sense. Why are you putting parentheses? You, uh, you know what? That's all I need to know about you. I don't need, I don't <laughs> need to go on with this one. Honestly, I feel like some like, like weird people would target be disaster film so they can write annoying reviews like this just to be like, well, no, actually that's not possible. And it's like, yeah, that's the point of this fucking, <laughs> like it's not supposed to be like all these things. Like there are reasons for it. Think more critically. Don't think so factually. In, in, oh, well, critic, critic, critically is a very big thing too in this day and age. Mm. And I'd say that about Trump a lot and everything that is still spinning off from him right now. Yeah. Yo, Proud Boys are terrorists. Boom. Fuck yes. I love you, Canada. Thank you for, thank you for saying that. Mm. I'm sorry that this is a random point in time, but like. That's an important one. It's, it is a, a, an important one. Proud yeah. Boys, you need to fuck. Right off. And I hope you get arrested and I hope you go to jail because no one needs your hate and violence and terrorism. Yeah. Love I can't it. believe that I'm like we're actually living through shit like this. I thought this was all just fake stuff when I was a kid. You know, like, oh, this can't be real. Like, I guarantee you all the kids that are growing up through COVID and this whole like Trump era fucking stuff is good. They're going to be messed up. They're going to be messed up because they don't understand what's right or wrong anymore. I know. Thank God it was only for a four handful years. Of years. Four years is a long time. Yeah, but there's still and, No, but it was still before that too. He ran He ran for it, right? So he, he did another two to four years before that running. Yeah. Anyways, let's go on to the next next review because that last guy made me too upset (laughs) easily one of the worst movies of all time i'm understating it this is the kind of bad that causes you to pause the movie so you can call your friends and tell them how you're watching the worst movie in the world which is of course the very reason i love this (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i fucking love it like i i purposely picked this one out yeah uh, the very reason i loved it i couldn't shut it off the script is shameless releasing magnesium payload from high altitude balloons this movie had me the whole way you couldn't make this sh- shit up a killer cloud of ice people freezing to death all over the place, a small fire that keeps the whole house from freezing (laughs) and killing everybody in it, the fearless refusal to confront the obvious contradictions in the story, such as the ability to go outside when necessary to get medicine and the ability to outrun the killer cloud by foot when appropriate. (laughs) This is a movie for the ages. It's a topical film that is all around brilliant in its ability to make you watch because you can't believe your eyes. You know it's getting worse and you cannot wait. If you love bad movies, you need to see this movie immediately. Right now, today. (laughs) I love this. Done. (laughs) Arctic Blast is easily one of the worst movies of all time. No questions about it. Run out and see it today. I like that because they actually embrace the whole, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I really want to leave it at this note. This review actually sums up everything that we tried to talk about today. Yeah. So I do hope that you go out, see this movie because it is the worst movie of all time. And which is the reason why it did not turn it off. <laughs> 
Uh, Jason Burke, thank you for in- being interviewed. And you need to go listen to that interview. It's phenomenal. On Starting From Scratch podcast. Currently, it's Apple, Spotify, and Google. We're working to get it on Pandora. Just a little bit slower, that's it. We're just a newer podcast, so we're getting that out there. And uh, we cannot wait. But um, I do want to say that Tosh, Tosh, my beautiful, lovely girlfriend, has been doing quite a few different uh, podcasts herself with Nancy Manning. Do you yeah. want to do you want to hype that up right now? For sure. Yeah. Nancy Manning uh, has a podcast called Eclectic Witching Hour. You can find it on Anchor, Spotify. Oh, gosh, I don't know where else. The main ones, anyways. Uh, we were doing some haunting s- swap stories, and um, we were also talking, doing some comparisons about serial killers, but we have a lot of stuff in the works, more collaborating. Also, Nancy's going to come and be on, I think, some episodes with us in the future. She's and awesome. And that is starting from scratch. That's and, right. And she's already on our uh, hashtag Dick Smoothie yeah. podcast, which is amazing. That's episode yeah. five. That's right. Yeah, episode five. <laughs> it's a fun time. Episode six will be coming out <laughs> on Monday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right, because um, we're, we're releasing this on Friday, which is like two days from now, <laughs> which is exciting because like it's so quick. Yeah. But we had too much fun with this episode. I think so. Um, but yeah, follow us on Instagram. We are at furred.nation, right? Yeah, yeah we're we film are. nerds. Because um, we're furds. You we're can follow furds. Daniel, who just changed his Instagram handle. And, and if you need to know <laughs> why I changed my Instagram handle, you're going to have to listen to the newest episode of Hashtag Dick Smoothie. Yeah, what's your new name on Instagram? My, my new Instagram name is at Dick Smoothie Douche. Oh, fuck. That sounds... And I, I got another you, story behind that. If you don't know how to spell douche, I... Just you Google it. Yeah, I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to say is hate has got to hate, but play has got to play. That <laughs> is true. It's so <laughs> true. Um, and then we're going to say uh, check out hashtag Dick Smoothies. Yeah. Smoothie at Dick Smoothies. Yeah. We're building up our we're building up our uh, social media game we're, not so we're bad. We're doing pretty g- damn yeah, good. Yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah, so yeah, thanks yeah. everyone for listening. But um, also like this is a fun podcast because we get to be just to like delve really deep into something. You know, it's oh, a good fuck time. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Okay, so here we go. Let's sign off with everyone. So I don't know. We haven't really had a sign off. Let's just go. Wow! Wow! Bow, bow, chick, 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 chick,